As humans, we have always been aware of the power of music. From the rhythms evoked from a shaman's drum, to the images painted by the ballets of Tchaikovsky, from the tears wept over the beauty of an opera song to the raging release of a metal concert, we know that music speaks to our very spirits and calms even the savage beast. But what if music really was magic? What if you could call forth lightning bolts from your guitar? What if drums could move the earth? What if a choir singing together could lead an army to victory? Hello and welcome to another episode of Just In Time Worlds with me, Marie Mullaney. Today I want to explore magic and music and the role that it can play in building a fantasy magic system. If you like this kind of world building content, do consider smashing that subscribe button and if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can buy my book, The Hidden Blade, or you can hit my Ko-fi page and more about that at the end of the video. I also do have a Discord server where you can connect with me and other world builders. Okay, let's get cracking with magical music. The first mythological use of music as magic comes to us from the Greek tale of Orpheus. Orpheus was the son of a muse and Apollo who also gave him his first lyra. Orpheus' singing and playing was so beautiful that animals and even trees and rocks moved about him in dance. Orpheus' wife, Eurydice, was killed and he entered the underworld to save her. Even Hades was moved by Orpheus' song and he was willing to let Eurydice go as long as neither of them looked back. Because this is a tragedy, Orpheus naturally looked back and lost his wife. But still, the song worked. Orpheus's magic worked because it spoke to the listener. Basically, Orpheus was using empathetic magic. He made you feel things that he wanted you to feel through his use of music. I've always seen bardic abilities from D&D &D as in this light and inspired by this myth. I'm not talking about the spells that bards can cast. What I'm talking about is their use of music as in inspire courage where they buff the party or inspire competence where they make it easier to use a certain skill. This speaks to me as the bard tapping into the empathy that we all share through music. However, there is another musical tradition in terms of using music as magic and that is where lyrics take the place of your spells and you are essentially singing the spell. The first mythological use of this comes from the Finnish Kalevala. So let me tell you about the time when Vainamoinen was trying to build a ship. In the Kalevala, questing for lyrics to create things is a major component of the various stories. In the second cycle of Vainamoinen, he needs to make a boat. Now he finally gets the right wood to make his boat, but he doesn't have the lyrics to sing the boat into being. He needs three extra words. Vainamoinen finds the giant Vipunen with the help of the smith Ilmarinen, and he forces a strong steel stake into Vipunen's mouth, which wakes him up and the giant swallows Vainamoinen whole. Vainamoinen creates a skiff and sails to the end of Vipunen's body, and then begins to work metal in the stomach of the giant. His stomach being turned into a smithy worries Vipunen, and he tries to get rid of Vainamoinen, but the wizard refuses to leave, telling Vipunen he'll only exit his body if he gets the lyrics to the song to make boats. Vipunen recites ancient spells and incantations from the dawn of the world, and when he finishes, Vainamoinen then has the words he needs, he leaves Vipunen's body and continues home. He completes his grand ship with no assistance from hammer or saw. The great thing about using lyrics in this way is that you get to explore somebody needing to find the right lyrics as a mechanism of the magic. This is used very effectively by Alan Dean Foster in his fantasy series, Spellsinger. Our hero in Spellsinger is John Tom, who is a student from Earth who is transported to a magical world by the turtle wizard Clotherhump. Now, in this magical world, John Tom discovers 
that he can evoke magic by means of singing and playing a duar, which is like a electric guitar. What makes the series incredibly fun is that John Tom keeps reaching back to our world's rock songs, which are the songs that he knows, in order to attempt to create lyrics. So if he wants, for example, transportation, he has to somehow sing a song about it. So at one point he sings about traveling on the yellow submarine because he's looking for a raft to travel down a river with. This kind of use of lyrics results in some truly hilarious hijinks, and I highly recommend Alan Dean Foster's Spell Singer series as a fun fantasy series. And it highlights very well how needing to discover the right lyrics can make for an extremely interesting world-building element and story element in the creation of the magic system that uses spell singing in this way. If you like this kind of exploration of mythological content and fantasy content side by side, please do hit that thumbs up button. And let's move on to a more science fantasy approach and using the harmonics of music in an almost scientific manner. In Anne McCaffrey's Crystal Singer series, the heroine Kilachandra originally trains as an opera singer. She has perfect pitch, but her voice isn't perfect and so she eventually ends up traveling to the world of Ballybron, where they mine special crystals that have to be cut using sonic cutters to a specific musical note. These crystals are used to provide faster-than-light communications and spaceship drives across the galaxy, so they're very much a spice-must-flow level of MacGuffin. No crystals, no real space travel and comms. However, because they must be mined and cut to a specific pitch of harmonics, crystal singers must have perfect pitch and they sing to the crystal rangers in order to find the crystals. The crystal rangers also sings back at the crystal singers and even causes arousal when the light of dawn first hits the exposed crystal. It's a really fun series that focuses on music in a completely different manner from the normal magical focus. The use of music and harmonics in a more scientific way can even be used in science fiction proper, as it were, where you can use it to manipulate metals, crystals, and other real physical objects. I swear I remember a book somewhere along the line that weaponized sound and turned it into some kind of gun. For the life of me, I could not find a reference to it using Google, and I cannot remember the title of the book. If you have ever read of sound being weaponized in this way, please do let me know in the comments below. It is going to keep bugging me if I cannot remember this. No discussion of magical music would be complete without discussing the shamanistic traditions of drumming. Traditionally, shamanistic drumming is used to go into a trance, to travel to other worlds, potentially to cast spells, or to tell the future. It can also be used in a fantasy sense to appeal to the spirits and get them to act on the shaman's behalf, making it a more religious spell casting than a classically arcane magic system. There is an awesome fantasy book for children called The Ghost Drum. The narrator of the story is the most learned of cats who tells the reader to spread this tale so that it may come back to the learned cat on the tongue of another. So listen now as I tell you the story of The Ghost Drum. A slave woman gives her newborn daughter to an old witch to be raised as a woman of power. This girl is Chingus, and she is taught how to use the shamanistic ghost drum. She enters many worlds, including the ghost world, using this drum. Chingus's rival is the bear shaman Kuzma, who envies and fears her great power. The Tsar, Gidon, is afraid of his son overthrowing him. He imprisons his pregnant wife, Farida, in a windowless room at the top of the tallest tower in the palace, and when she dies in childbirth, he orders that his son, 
the Tsarevich Safa should never leave the room. Safa spends many years in solitude, but at last his cries of distress reaches the metaphorical ears of Chingus, and she, using the ghost drum, finds him and spirits him away to her house on chicken legs. Safa becomes Chingus's apprentice, and for him the world is filled with wonder. His father, the Tsar, dies and fighting breaks out in the palace as the Tsar's sister, Margareta, ascends to the throne. She determines to find her nephew intending to kill him. The bear shaman, Kuzma, offers to help her. Using his shamanistic knowledge against Chingus, Kuzma succeeds in killing her and capturing Safa. However, in the ghost world, Chingus enlists the help of three other women and she returns to her body and defeats Kuzma. The four spirits take over his body and they destroy Margareta before returning to the ghost world to await rebirth. Now you know the story of the ghost drum and you must pass it on to others so that someday it makes its way back to the most learned of cats. So if you enjoyed that story, please do hit the thumbs up button. This kind of shamanistic drumming tradition convinced me to include drumming in my magic system. My Rulara people live in the far north and they are reindeer herders and they have a tradition of drumming. They can use the drums to call the magic of the world forth to do their bidding. Among other things, they can travel using the ghost lights by drumming themselves into the ghost lights, and they refer to this as walking on the drum beat. The ghost lights in this case is the Aurora Borealis, so they can effectively use the rainbow bridge of the Aurora Borealis to travel with. If you like the sound of my world, my first book, The Hidden Blade, is on sale now. Links to audiobooks, print book, and Kindle edition in the links down below and it is available via Kindle Unlimited. There is one last element of magical music that I wish to discuss and that is its potential in rituals and multiple magic caster use. Because music lends itself to being a group activity through bands and choirs and so on, magical music also lends itself to being a group activity. This gives you access to things like a choir of mages singing together to evoke a far greater result than anything that a single mage can achieve. This further allows you to explore the politics of putting together such a dynamic group of mages, which means that the band breaking up can go from being sad for the fans to being a catastrophe for the world. So if you're thinking about including magical music in your magic, definitely think about the impact that group dynamics have, both in terms of the power level of the spells evoked and in terms of group politics and clashes negatively impacting the magic of your world. And that is my take on magical music and how it can be used in fantasy settings. I hope that you enjoyed that episode of Just In Time Worlds. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you did. If you really enjoyed this and you want to help me make more of these videos, you can buy my book, The Hidden Blade by Marie M. Mullaney, or you can hit my Ko-fi page where you can make a one-off donation, buy a membership, or even buy a product.